Hello students, my snack crate came in the mail. It's a fun little thing I get every month with my son. And uh, it just, they send snacks from all over the world, different places from all over the world. And this time it's, it comes from Brazil. And they, it gives little facts about Brazil and has all these cool little snacks. Look at those. Look at those. Look at this one. What is that? What kind of Oreos are those? Isn't that fun? Yeah. Whoa. It's like a smoky barbecue sauce. Like a, it tastes like, it's like a smoky, smoky barbecue sauce. Like, mmm. Mmm. Probably should have opened that with my son. He's three years old. He, he likes the opening part and, uh, oh well. Do it next time. But these chips are so good. All right, students, today we're doing chemistry. We're going to be learning about nomenclature. That's just, that's just a fancy name for naming. We're going to be naming uh, ionic compounds, and this time we're going to be naming type 3 and type 4 ionic compounds. All right, students, we're covering um, type 3 and type 4 ionic compounds today. You can see that they're highlighted in yellow. Um, we're still going to be following these same rules, asking if the compound is binary, yes, or non-binary, no. And then once we, deter once we determine that question, then we can move on to following rule number 1 and 2. Okay, but before we start this lesson, let's do a review of type 1 and type 2. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, and you can put in your answers here for type 1 and type 2. But let's go ahead and work it out. So we're going to turn sodium bromide, the name, into the formula. Sodium is Na, and bromide is Br. Um, looking at the periodic table, we can see that sodium is located in this group, and that has a 1 plus charge, and uh, bromide is... Bromine is located in this group, and, the, and it's a one negative charge. So uh, they only, you only need one of each of them to balance. The balance beam looks like this. Sodium with the positive one, and uh, with the one positive, and bromide with the one negative. Okay, so you only need one of each, meaning this is the correct formula. All right, next one is going to be scandium carbonate. Looking at our periodic table, we see scandium located right here. It has a pos three positive charge. Let's put that over here on the scale. Okay, and we can see carbonate. Carbonate is located right here on our 10 common polyatomic ions chart located in your links to resources. This is a resource on Canvas for you. Uh, carbonate has a two negative charge. That's a three positive for scandium, and there's carbonate with a two negative. Well, it looks like they're not balanced. The charges are not balanced. Right now, it's three positives. It does not balance with two negatives. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is add a whole other carbonate polyatomic ion by drawing it in there, and now this side has a four minus charge. We got to add uh, another one of these guys over here. Um, now this is a six plus charge. See what we did there? Now we got to add a whole other carbonate for, and now the charge is balanced. So our correct formula, we should say scandium with a subscript of two, showing that there's two scandiums that balance the charges with a total of three Carbonates. Now, were you tempted to just draw it like this? Nope, don't do that. That means there's 33 oxygens. That's wrong. There's only three carbonates, so we need to use parentheses around polyatomic ions when there's more than one. Okay. That's the correct formula for scandium carbonate. Now we need to write the um, name. This one would be a binary or non-binary ionic compound. It's made from a metal and a non-metal. Is it binary or non-binary? There's two elements only, so that means it's binary. Three magnesium atoms and two nitrogen atoms in this ionic compound. 
So the rule number one says to name the metal. And then name the non-metal ending with ide. So this is going to be called nitride, not nitrogenide. Name it nitride. Notice the suffix is like this. Okay, the next one, uh, we're going to go from formula to name. And is it binary? No, it's not. There's three different elements. There's a magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen. So this is not binary. And then rule number one says to name the metal. Rule number two says to name the polyatomic ion. So this one would be called, oops. How did I know the name? Well, you can look at that list of common polyatomic ions. If it's not on there, uh, you can look it up on Google. Okay, students, now on to the big lesson of the day. We're going to be doing type 3 and type 4 uh, ionic compounds. And um, we follow the same exact rules, except for this time we're not going to ignore the little asterisks that say Roman, numeral, Roman num number if transitional. The Roman number if transitional. So you don't know... You might not know what Roman numbers are. I'm going to teach you those. And you might not know what a transitional means. And so I'm going to teach you that right now. Okay, so here are the Roman numerals. Roman numbers, we'll just call them. Okay, so they go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I believe that's all you'll see. Yeah, but I'll give you, I'll give you all of them. Nah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, Roman numeral one is just a capital letter I. Okay, Roman number two is an I, like a, it's kind of like an I, but it has the two, two dashes. Roman numeral three follows the same rule. Roman numeral four does something interesting. It's almost better if I teach you Roman numeral five first. So the Roman numeral five looks like a V. So now if we go back to four, it kind of makes sense. It's a five, but one before five. See how that works out? Here's a five. That's one before five is four. Now, what do you think six is going to look like? Well, you may have guessed that it's a little V with a one after, and seven is going to be V with two after. That's how the Roman numerals work. You'll need to memorize the Roman numbers uh, because you're going to need to use them when you're uh, naming type three and type four ionic compounds. If you haven't noticed, we never really talk about this section in the middle. Well, now we are. This section in the middle is called the transitional metals, and that's what that's what the notes mean when it says Roman number if it's a transitional. It means you have to include a Roman no number if the metal is a transitional metal. That's what the notes mean. So all of these from column 4 to column 12, all of them in there um, are called the transition metals. We have never really used them in our formulas or anything like that until now. Now you're going to be responsible for knowing these guys. But really, I'm only going to be giving you problems with like the top two transitional metals and maybe some gold down here. Okay. That's what transitional means. You might be asking yourself, well, what Roman numeral do I put? What Roman numeral do I put? Well, you're going to have to figure that one out. Uh, but let's first look at some examples. Um, look at the formula iron with oxygen. So it turns into iron oxide. But you notice that there is a Roman number of three right there. Okay, well, um, I know that you know how to do this part, name, name the iron and name the oxide. It's the Roman numeral three that you don't know how to do yet. So the Roman numeral three, all the Roman numeral is, is the charge on the transitional metal. So the Roman number is the charge on the transitional metal. Okay, so here's our balance beam. And the formula says it's iron 2 and oxide 3. So if we put iron, two irons, and we put three oxygens, well, we know the charges have to balance. And we know that each oxide has a charge of two minus. 
That's a total of negative 6 for the right side of the balance beam. That's why the Roman numeral is 3, because the Roman number is the charge on the transitional metal. The Roman number 3 means that each iron in this compound has a 3 positive charge. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, let's look at the next example. The next example um, is a non-binary, type 4 non-binary compound with the transitional metal. So if it's not a binary compound, then remember we need to name the metal, um, and we're going to include the Roman numeral if it's transitional, and then rule 2 is to name the polyatomic ion. Okay, so we have Cu, which stands for copper, and we have NO3, which stands for nitrate. How did I know it was nitrate? I used my uh, common polyatomic ions resource found in Canvas. Okay, um, and then it has a positive 2 written right here. That must mean that copper's charge is going to be a positive 2 charge. So let's put it on our balance beam. Copper has a positive 2 charge. And here's nitrate. It shows that there's two of them in this ionic compound. So I have to have another nitrate. Huh. Say you were not looking at your common polyatomic ion chart. What charge do you think each nitrate has? Well, two positives must balance out with two negatives, right? Well, since we have two nitrates, that means each nitrate can have a one minus charge. Okay. Alright students, let's do some practice here. Um, here we have the symbol CR and here we have the symbol O. Let's find them on the periodic table. There's the symbol CR, it stands for chromium. And there's the symbol O, it stands for oxygen. So what are the rules? Well, we see that it's a binary compound. So we're going to follow the yes side right here says to name the metal and then give the Roman numeral if it's a transitional metal and then two, name the non-metal ending with ide. So first we name the metal. Then we, um, then we give the Roman numeral if it's a transitional. Yeah, so there is a Roman numeral, so we're gonna save room for that. Okay, and then we can name the non-metal ending with ide, oxide. So how do we know what the Roman numeral is? Well, the Roman number is just the charge on the metal. How do I know what the charge is? This is not the charge. This subscript represents the number of chromium atoms in an ionic compound. So we need to do the we need to use the balance beam. So let's put the balance beam. And the formula says that there's two chromiums, one, two, and there's three oxygens, one, two. Three, since I don't know the charge on the chromium, I have to go to the periodic table to find the charge on the oxygen, the oxide, excuse me. So here's oxide over here when it becomes a two minus charge. So each oxide has a two minus charge. Since we know that this is a balance beam and each side has the balance with, with each other, that means balancing, we have a six minus charge on this side and we must have a six positive charge on this side. So what does that tell you about each of these chromium ions? They must have a positive three charge and that's how you can figure that out. Okay, so what Roman numeral do we put right here? We put the three Roman numeral. It looks like this. Let's do the next, next example. The okay, next example is K for potassium. And S 
for sulfur, but we have to end the metal with the suffix I. Name the non-metal and end with the suffix I. That's what it says right here. Okay. Um, oh, we forgot. It says to give a Roman numeral if it's transitional. Okay, so let's find potassium. Okay, where's potassium? There it is, way over here on this left side. Oh wait, potassium's not a transitional metal because the transitional metals are located in this area from column four to column 12. So since potassium is not a transitional metal, that means you do not have to write a Roman number. So good, that's the name of that one, potassium sulfide. Look, there's no Roman number. All right, students, next one is going to be iron 3 oxide. Oh, wait, I think I just gave it away. I just gave away the answer. Dang it. Oh, well, let's work it out anyway. So since it's an ionic compound, there's a metal bonding with a nonmetal. Um, we're going to name it, and we're going to ask ourselves if it's binary. Is it binary? Yes, there's only two elements, iron and oxide. That means it's a binary molecule. So let's follow the rules for yes. So what we have to do is name the metal, give the Roman number if it's transitional, and then name the nonmetal ending with I. Those are the rules that we have to follow. So let's name the metal iron, and we don't know the non we don't know the Roman number yet, but we do we do need that we we do know that we have to have one. And then let's name the nonmetal oxide. So let's get our balance beam out. And the formula tells us, the formula over here tells us that there's two irons, one, two, and three oxides. One, two, three. Looking at the periodic table, I can see that oxygen is in this column, and that means that oxide has a two negative charge. So each oxide has a two negative charge. Hmm. How many, how many negative charges are on the right side? Total of six minus. And that needs to balance with six plus. Has to, has to balance with six plus. So what does that tell you about each of these iron ions? They must be a three positive charge. And so that's why I said earlier that the name of this formula is iron three oxide. All right. All right, let's see if you can do this last one on your own. I made it difficult. I made it tricky. We'll see if you're capable of doing it. Pause the video if you need right now. Okay, well, it looks like this is an ionic compound because it's uh, between a metal and a nonmetal. How did I know it was a metal? Well, we have uh, vanadium, which is located right here, V for vanadium. And we have sulfate, which is a polyatomic, nonmetal polyatomic ion. All right, and uh, is it binary? Well, no, it's not binary because there's three different elements present. So since it's not binary, what we need to do is name the metal, give the Roman numeral if it's transitional, and name the polyatomic ion. So the V stands for vanadium. We don't know the Roman numeral yet, but do we need it? Vanadium is located right here. Yes, we do need it because vanadium is a transitional metal. So uh, after we get the Roman number, then we need to name the nonmetal, or excuse me, name the polyatomic ion. If you look at your polyatomic ion sheet, that should say sulfate. If it's not there, well now you know and memorize it. Okay, so uh, once you look up sulfate, you can see the charge on sulfate is a two negative charge. All right. Oh, I forgot to put a little two right here. I'm sorry. Okay, and you can see in the formula that there's a, a two subscript here, mean, meaning that there's two sulfates in this formula. All right, and then we have vanadium over here. On this side, there's a four minus charge that can only balance with, it's a funny happy face, that can only balance with a four positive charge, meaning that on this one vanadium ion, it must be a four positive charge, okay? So this is how we write it. Vanadium with a Roman numeral of four sulfate. All right, students, that's all the practice there is. Good luck on the worksheet.
Mm, these chips are good. I'm going to open another one for you. Look at Trento Bites. I have no idea what they taste like. Mmm. Chocolatey little crisps.